So, uh, good morning to one and all present here. I'm presenting on behalf of Medicine 5, Iceberg Phenom. 21-year-old Mrs. A from Jharkhand presented with fever for past three months, polyarthralgia for three months, transient oral ulcers for two months. Patient was apparently well three months back, after which she developed fever for three months, which was high grade with occasional chills and rigors, which was present intermittently without any undocumented temperature. History of generalized polyarthralgia involving the large joints and small joints of both upper and lower limbs. She predominantly said she had involvement of the elbow as well as uh, the wrist and the metacarpophalangeal joints and uh, lower limb knee joint as well as ankle joint with tarsophalangeal joints. She had polyarthralgia, but she had never noticed uh, joint swelling and that mainly relieves on... Uh, Whenever she's on, when she, whenever she's having active movements, and it is really aggravated by rest with early morning stiffness. There was history of palpitations also, which was uh, acute onset and occurs intermittently whenever she was having stress that was not associated with chest pain for the past three months. She also has history of oral ulcers for two months that was occurring transiently and results. Then history of hair loss with no residual scarring and history of increased sensitivity to light. She had told. And history of dryness of mouth. However, there was no history of hematuria, dryness of eyes, history suggestive of Renaud's phenomenon, no history of breathlessness. So, obstetric history, she was para 1, live 1, without any abortion. The last childbirth was March 24, 2024. So, treatment history for this uh, fever, she was evaluated at her hometown and she had received parenteral artisanate therapy from 21 to 25, 6, but there was no microbiological evidence of the uh, malarial parasite noted on the reports. Uh, examination wise, vitally she was stable. There were uh, no uh, the tender joint counts and swelling joint counts always zero score. Systemic examination also see uh, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, abdomen and CNS were clinically normal. And oral cavity there were no also. However, dental caries were present and mouth opening uh, was two finger breadth. So she had a clinical syndrome of pyrexia of unknown origin with polyarthralgia, which was uh, features were suggestive of inflammatory, with oral ulcers, photophobia, and xerostomia. What could be the differentials that we consider at this point of time? So we had the following differentials. First, autoimmune, systemic lupus erythematosus, Jogren's syndrome, sarcoidosis, rheumatoid and adult onset skill disease were lower down, and infection, Malaria, brucellosis, endocarditis, and malignancy, mainly we, would, uh, we were looking for hot skin lymphoma if it is present, but age is unlikely, and miscellaneous drug fever. Her uh, routine blood investigations were done, which uh, the positive findings were mainly a bicytopenia with hemoglobin of 8.7 and total WBC of 3,200. Otherwise, all her blood investigations were normal. As previously discussed, we went ahead with the autoimmune workup, and uh, we uh, calcium was normal, so we the possibility of sarcoidosis very, very low. And also uh, the brucella, which we thought was negative, malarial parasite was negative, except for ANA, which was two plus speckle. And then we had, since she had come with uh, fever, we had also sent a blood culture. And this blood culture had grown enterococcus uh, fecalis, uh, which was susceptible to ampicillin, linisolid, gentamicin, and vancomycin resistant to levofloxacin. So can anyone say what could be the I mean, diagnosis at this point of time? So uh, one of the points which uh, our consultant told during the rounds was infective endocarditis is one of those systemic conditions which presents like an autoimmune disease. 
So we had uh, done the echo also, and echo showed a echogenic mass attached to the anterior leaflet of tricuspid valve with independent um, mobility, 9 mm cross 6 mm possible vegetation, TR moderate. When we are asking about the history of um, probable IV drug use, she has had only during her pregnancy and uh, the artisanal therapy which she had. Otherwise, she has had no uh, risk factors. So she fulfilled the modified uh, Duke's criteria. Uh, where two major criteria she had fulfilled positive blood culture for typical microorganism, community acquired enteropurpose fecalis, and also there was endocardial involvement of, uh, ec uh, of uh, vegetation. <laughs> However, in view of the ANA being two plus and speckled, we thought if it was a false positive ANA or if there is an underlying connective tissue disorder that has uh, caused the ANA positivity, and thereby we went ahead and did the uh, routine uh, workup. So, complement levels were normal, the DSDNA were uh, 2 plus, but uh, anti SSA and anti SSB were positive. So, we also did the lip biopsy with the Schumer's test. So, the lip biopsy was negative, focus score was uh, less than 1. There was no significant inflammation, but Schumer's test was positive for dry eyes. So, in our patient, she had Schumer's test positive. And uh, serum antibodies were positive, and she was also diagnosed with primary Jogren syndrome. She also fulfilled the ACR, a ACR, and EULA criteria for primary Jogren syndrome, where uh, anti SSA rho was positive, three points, and Schimmer's test also was positive, so four points. So she was diagnosed of native valve infective endocarditis based on Duke's criteria with primary Jogren syndrome. So uh, we just went ahead and looked for any association between infective endocarditis and Jogren syndrome. This was a study published which showed that poor dentition and uh, uh, insufficient oral care was presumed to be risk factors for infective endocarditis. So in this study, uh, they had uh, isolated an organism called granulocatella additions in the particular person. Um, so um, patients with Jogren syndrome might be at risk of infective endocarditis because of the increased bacteremia and oral complications. And this was another case study which uh, mainly uh, said the same thing that is Jogren syndrome is an important, is one of the risk factors for infective endocarditis. So it is thought that because of the zero reduction in the salivary volume and loss of the antibacterial properties, this will accelerate the bacterial infection and periodontal disease. So in our patient, we gave ampicillin and ceftrioxone. We also started on uh, hydrochloroquine after ophthalmic, ophthalmic uh, evaluation and we have... Uh, Put, I mean, given her steer substitutes. So learning points, mainly association between infective endocarditis and job syndrome. Thank you. Let's give Dr. Shruti a hand. So patient with right-sided endocarditis, did you look for lung abscesses, small lung abscesses? Uh, was there imaging done of the lung? Uh, it was done, so it was normal. So usually right-sided endocarditis will spread to the lung, not... And uh, dental infections presenting with right-sided endocarditis are common or uncommon? Kelly is causing right-sided endocarditis. That's a bit unusual. Or is there some link with Joe Grin? So that's something to keep in mind. Thank you, Dr. Shruti. Uh, we have come to the end of today's clinical meeting. They were interesting presentations. I was looking for somebody who had a, a clinical approach to a case. Uh, many people have done well. Uh, I think both Dr. Rizwana and Dr. Narendran had very nice clinical approaches to their cases. Others also had good approaches. I think I'll give the prize today to Dr. Narendran from Medicine Unit 1. Well done, Narendran. Thank you all. We've come to the end of today's clinical meeting.